Welcome. You have reached review time with Imperial. We're going to re review this week's episode of The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 2. Let's get into it. So, this episode um, takes place with Rick narrating um, what has transpired, what's going on. He's in the um, dark room talking to someone. Everyone already knows who can speculate who he's talking to, but he's in the dark room and he's basically expressing how all the communities are coming together and they're working together and what is transpiring since they've been working together. So from episode one to episode two is 35 days has passed. So um, they're in the process of building this bridge that broke down and this bridge is supposed to be like this is what by all, everybody working together this is supposed to bring all the communities communities um really together and really uh hilltop um the kingdom and alexandria they all was really together because that's they came together to, to fight negan and um the water side people and uh they already already came together now it's just bridging the gap with the sanctuary because they were the enemy so the sanctuary has the manpower so they have the manpower and part of their trade-off to receive food and everything that they do the bulk of building the bridge and everything so um on the back side michonne approaches maggie saying that you know, basically, they haven't received, the sanctuary hasn't received the food, and they need, you know, get their food, they have, and so, Maggie still being Maggie, she's standoffish, however, um, Michonne is persistent, like, you know, basically, like, they need that, so, Jesus and Michonne has a conversation, basically telling, like, yo, she tripping, but Jesus basically saying, I follow her, you know what I'm saying, even though I don't agree with her all the time. So, the guy that tried to kill her in season episode one, Earl, he's in jail in a um, hilltop. He's in jail, and his wife wants to see him. He's been in jail for 35 days. She hasn't seen him, and so... They convinced Maggie to let her see him. And when Maggie took her down there to see him, she got to see that their love for each other. And they got to see that, you know, Earl was apologizing to her that he allowed his addiction to alcohol um, bring the worst out of him and put shame uh, to himself and his wife. And, you know, he basically was just saying, like, he misses the son. And then that was a reflection on Maggie because she knew her dad was an alcoholic and he was able to turn it around. So that was her compassion. That's what pushed her to um, change her heart, kind of give the food to the um, sanctuary. And she found a way that uh, pretty much that allowed Earl to do like a work release so so he can fix the plow that they got from the museum because he's a blacksmith and really he's the only blacksmith that they got so she need him meanwhile you know Michonne is pretty much like questioning Maggie's leadership and pretty much saying hey you know and then Maggie pretty much telling her she wasn't uh she don't regret what happened to Gregory. He had chance upon chance, and he never wished him call. And then Michonne is pretty much like, well, who, baby, who gave you, you know, to make that decision? So it's a little friction right there, still brewing between them or whatever. Back at the camp, because the sanctuary and Daryl's crew and all that, they really don't like each other. They still, like, still tension there. So there's a moment where Henry's job is to give everybody water, and he does. But then the one guy, he wants to take a little bit too much water. And so he push St. Henry on the ground, like, basically, kid, get out of here. And um, 
Cammy comes back and hits him with the pole and drops him on the ground or whatever. So Daryl came in basically telling him he's just doing his job. So Daryl and the guy starts fighting. Rick comes in and intervenes. And so this same guy, you could tell he's going to be a problem, you know, or whatever. He got an annoying spirit about him. And, you know, later that night, he tells Rick, like, pretty much, like, yo, you need to keep your dog on a leash. And basically talking about Daryl. And Rick pretty much told him, like, yo, man, don't test me. You know, I'll get you up out of here. You got a little stitches here, but I, I'll make sure I do something, whatever, to you. So the dude was pretty much like, man, I'm out of here. And I'm not going to wait till the night. Um, the morning to leave. So he leaves. Now we're going to get back to that part. So. Uh, they are getting the herd. To move around. And so. they by, The herds move by sound. So. They put a ploy. Like to let some. Dynamite off. To get this herd to go elsewhere. However. They set the dynamite off. Rosita and this other girl set the dynamite off. You hear, like, AMC is building the Walking Dead up to get prepared for the whispers. So you actually hear one of the walkers talk when they set that bomb off. Like, they were walking, and then the walkers I, I, I said something or whatever. If you go back and look, um, it's the scene where Rosita and the girl set the bomb off and it shows the walkers walking. And then when the one walker that they got close up screen on turns around, it talks. So, uh, the whispers are real weird because they're randomly walking like walkers and they're actually walking amongst the dead. Like they're weird. Like. I can understand when you're trying to travel to places, but, you know, they're randomly with the walkers. So that's, that was weird, but they building you up and that's little stuff like that. You probably will not pay attention to. So, um, there's a scene where, uh, they're building logs for the, um, for the bridge and stuff like that. And then there's an accident that happened and one of the people from the sanctuary didn't move the herd, like direct the herd to go the other way when Rosita and them set the bomb off. So now the herd is coming their way. And so now they got everybody is panicking. And one of the dudes that panicked, he let the um, log go and the big log fell on Aaron's arm. Now his arm is stuck underneath the log and his arm is underneath there. So Daryl comes and everybody comes and they're fighting off the walkers. So they finally get the log off of his arm, but his arm is pretty much smashed and mangled. They get him back to the campsite and they, you know, it's really nothing you could do to save the arm, especially in a zombie apocalypse. Like how you want to really save his arm. So they, they say the best thing to, to do to, uh, save his life is amputate his arm. So, course they cut his arm off and uh now he'd be one arm Aaron but people believe he's taking Rick's comic book story art because in the comic book Rick had a nub he got his arm cut off and um he got the beard looking like the Rick from the uh comic book so a lot of people believe they that's what they're doing the writers tend to see if they don't write the they pick the comic book, they do little spins on certain things, so they believe that they that's a part of that they're going to bring. Give him the nub and uh, let him take Rick's story arc from there. Then you have Jadis. Um, Jadis, who is now Anne, she's getting more familiar with everybody, and she's getting closer to... Uh, Father G. Now, if y'all remember, Jadis did paintings and stuff like that when she was, even when she was back at the the garbage um, spot. And Jadis was a freak because it was moments where you see Jadis was uh, walking around, 
basically naked in the the garbage area or whatever and it was a moment where she wanted to get at get with Rick one of those moments when he went there and uh so you know she already had that freak part of her so it shows her uh trying to get close to father g and um she's making advances at him she touched his um his hand when they was discussing she drew a picture for father g and then she touched his hand the you know showing like an intimate moment then it shows another scene where her and him is he's on watch out duty and she's conversating with him or whatever and pretty much you know she's telling him like basically I'm into you, like why you ain't pushing up and then he pretty much like hey I'm not a I'm a priest, I'm not like, you know, like I gotta be a virgin and stuff. So he started kissing her and then she uh, of course she went straight to the to the to the pants buckle. She she tried to get it in. But only thing with that is Anne is suspect. Like she got that suspect tag in it. I can't give full trust in her because she was she was sneaky and dirty before so it was after that scene with father g they have watch out so they got one of them um tractor things that people use at construction that elevates you way up in the sky and that's part of their watch out so she's up there on watch out and the helicopter is in the middle of the night creeping where they're building this bridge at. And she sees it. So she has this look on her face like she knows something's up. Like it's something she ain't telling the rest of the group. Because she seems to know about who's in the helicopter and what's their purpose. Now, she had at the uh, garbage... Um, location she used to stay at she had a helicopter platform there so you know she knows more and she's suspect you know so i don't trust ann right now and there's a what's been going on several saviors been leaving but they haven't been making it back to the sanctuary so they saying like they got families back home so they wouldn't just dip off they've been getting snatched so the guy that was beefing with Rick from the sanctuary that said, I'm basically, and I mean, that was beefing with Daryl and then Rick, I'm leaving. I'm not even waiting till tomorrow. So he's leaving in the middle of the night. He's drinking. He's on his way back to wherever. And then it shows whoever's watching him leave through first person view. He sees them and then he knows whoever that person is. And so they snatch him up. Now, I don't know if they kill him or what, but they snatch. They definitely snatch it. Don't really show whether they kill him. It looks like they just snatched him up or whatever. So who knows what that situation is? So we can't assume that's not like that's not a walker situation. I mean, a um, whisperer situation. So I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's a group that's just, hey, man, we're going to build our own uh, rebellion. We're going to build our own rebellion up. So there's a theory out there that uh, Negan is sneaking out of the jail at night. And somebody's letting Negan out or he's sneaking out and he's recruiting his crew so he could do an uprise against Rick and them. Or whatever. So that's a theory that Negan is sneaking. He's running around in the woods and whatever. So you heard that here first if you ain't heard that before. So back to Rick and um like I said, Rick was narrating. He's in a room in the beginning of the episode, dark room. And of course, at the end of the episode it shows Nick or Rick talking to Negan in the jail cell and he's saying all these things and then that's when the line that's been Traveling on all the trailers where Negan pretty much says, hey, you you just, you just, think you got it all figured out. You just getting the world ready for me. So that's pretty much how the episode went. It was a decent episode. It wasn't that bad. Um, 
Andrew Lincoln, you know, is a uh, is a good actor, you know, and uh, you don't, you know, you you if these are his for real or true last episodes, you're really thinking like, man, I don't know where the show's gonna go because he, him being the lead character, he, you know, it rocks. I don't know where the show's gonna go when he finally uh, exits the the show. So I mean, it's gonna be different. Uh, it will be different. He's been the lead too long, and a lot of times when the main main lead leaves, the show leaves with it. So we're going to see how they hold up. But with the whispers coming in, um, that could you know help everything, depending how they officially bring them in. But they're building it up now, or whatever. And I mean this, is, and also in this episode. This is an episode showing how everybody, there's a lot of couples forming and um, togetherness. People are getting along or whatever. But you can tell when everything is good, starting to try to happen, something bad has got to knock you right back in perspective. So other than that, stay tuned to next week. Subscribe and like, share the video, comment if you are into The Walking Dead or if you watched the episode. What was your thoughts on it? What's your theories on it? On um, the missing, the guys that are missing from the sanctuary. What's your thoughts? Um, tell me if you uh, think my theory is true that that I, you know, rumors going around that Negan is roaming the forest at night and stuff like that. So, and snatching up his crew to build a rebellion. Make sure your notification button is on. Till next time.